This is the Houston Real Estate Market Update for September 2022. Welcome guys, my name is Andy Montavo. I'm a real estate agent here in Houston, Texas, and we're gonna be covering a lot of what's going on in the real estate market right now in 2022 in the months of September. Now, majority of people have been reading online and all about about what's going on in the real estate market. So they may have an idea of what it is. And usually the main thing right now is people thinking that the market is crashing. Now I can't say the market is crashing, but we are seeing some sort of a slowdown. Now home prices are taking a little bit of a dip and have taken a little bit of a dip throughout the summer months. And things have slowed down a little bit in real estate in terms of how many buyers are coming on a market. That's mainly due to mortgage rates. As many of us have heard, you know, mortgage rates keep increasing, which is bringing buyers out of the market. As we will discuss today, and as we discussed in our last market update, you can check it out right here for the month of August. Even though things seem like they're going down for real estate, when you look at the nitty gritty and you look at the numbers, it's actually pretty healthy. Some homes are still selling pretty quickly and some people are still getting really good prices for their houses. What I think the market is just doing is just weeding out all the unrealistic sellers and unrealistic buyers from the market and just bringing us back to a more normal real estate market. Now to start with, we did see a total number of 25,000 283 active listings in the month of September, 2022, which was a 6% increase when compared to August. Now, 6% doesn't sound like a lot, but we do need to mention that that was a 43% increase when you compare it to last year in September. That is a huge uptick in listings when you compare it to 2021. One thing to do note is that we only had about 11,644 new listings come on the market, which was actually a 6% decrease when you compare it to August. What does that mean? We had Active listings go up and new listings go down. That just means that more listings are sitting on the market for a little bit longer. Now that doesn't mean your hopes for sellers are completely gone. And right now when you see a lot of people freaking out when their home isn't selling in a week is because for the past two years, we were pretty much used to home selling over a weekend and getting all of these offers in. Now we're in a more realistic marketplace where we actually have to put more effort into selling our house and we have to be a little more patient with the offers coming in. And that is evident because in the number of sales actually decreased a 10% from August to September. And we only had about 6,986 total number of sales, which is also a 25% decrease when you compare it to September, 2021. Now we can blame most of this decrease in sales as the buyer demand has gone down due to the increase in interest rates. As we have seen recently, interest rates have continued to increase and we continue to hear rumors about them that they will continue to increase as the year goes on. So we will see what the buyer demand does happen towards the end of the year. Now it is good to mention that usually around these times, things start slowing down. You know, the hotter times for real estate are in the spring months. That's when majority of people are buying real estate. And when those October, November, and December times come, I think people are just not really out and about. There's a lot of holidays, you know, a lot of movement between families and this and that. People are just not making that many moves during the fall and winter months. So do that decrease in demand. You as a home seller can expect your house to sit a little bit longer. Our median days to sell in Houston were about 18 days. Now that is an increase of about five days when you compare it to the days to sell of August, which was at 13. Your house can get sold in about two weeks. So like I mentioned before, I think a lot of the fear that's coming from sellers is that their house is just not going over a weekend and that they're gonna have to be a little more patient in order to sell their house. Our month of inventory also increased and went up to a 3.6, which is just showing how the market is going back to a normal level and taking us out of that super strong seller's market that we were in in 2021 and late 2020. Now, all in all, with active listings going up and the number of sales going down and that's just freaking a bunch of sellers out that they're not gonna be able to sell their house, we have to realize housing prices are still increasing when you're on a month to month basis. In Houston, we had an average home sale price of $344,000, which was only a slight, maybe 1% increase when you compare it to August. So it's showing that things are coming back up a little bit. Overall, yes, our medium home sale price is lower right now than it was at the beginning of the summer. But at the beginning of the summer, we still had scenarios where people were paying way over asking price for homes. Now you're getting to scenarios where buyers are gaining more negotiability on those properties and sellers who are overpricing their houses are getting hit by long wait times or just constant decreases in prices. And remember, if you are a home seller, the longer your home sits on the market, the more you're gonna to have to decrease your price. So it's best to just go ahead and price your house correctly right away. It's not so much to worry, we just are seeing a shift in the market. We are seeing it become more buyer friendly and bringing back some of the negotiability. Buyers are able to get maybe seller's credits to buy down their interest rates. And also if you're looking for an investment property, it's a good time to go out there and try to find a deal. 
even though the interest rates are high, you can probably negotiate a property well enough to where you can fit the numbers to it. There's a number that works for every property. You just have to really do your due diligence on it. Now, I usually like to break down the sales numbers based on what you know price ranges we have here in Houston and how they're differing in the different levels of real estate that we have. However, really the main difference that you're seeing is that homes in the in the very luxury market, you know, homes over a million dollars are actually seeing an increased number in sales. Now, while the number of sales are still very low, you know, it's almost maybe in the 200s compared to the thousands of sales that you have on homes under a million dollars, you are seeing an increase in sales in those numbers versus homes under a million dollars. You're seeing the drops in sales from 15 to 18% depending on the price range. You're seeing most of the drops in sales in the homes between 500 and a million dollars. Now that large market might be hurting a little bit more than the market under $500,000 because like I mentioned before, there are investors going out there and buying properties and trying to get deals on properties since things are holding longer. So usually a lot of those properties sit below the $500,000 mark. Now let's cover the top areas inside the Loop of Houston. Inside the Loop of Houston, you had the Heights and Greater Heights area lead the market with 77 homes sold and 109 contracts written. Up next, you had the East End revitalized market with 26 homes sold and 45 contracts written. Then you had the Lazy Brook and Timber Grove market with 22 homes sold and 33 contracts written. Now let's move to our busiest markets, which are usually the markets in the suburban areas of Houston and the metropolitan areas. Leading the market, as usual, we had Katy with 416 homes sold and 767 contracts written. Up next, we had Cypress with 241 homes sold and 377 contracts written. And next, we had Richmond with 202 homes sold and 386 contracts written. One thing that I think is worth mentioning about these statistics is that the contracts that are being written in the months of September is actually decreasing when you compare it to the contracts being written in August. Now, it does tell me that we're probably going to see a drop in sales in the month of October as well. However, like I've mentioned before, if you are a home buyer and you are in the marketplace and you're financially ready and you're in need to buy a new house, even though rates are increasing, this may be a great time for you to go out and find a good deal on a house. Your buyer negotiability is increasing, so you may be able to get a good reduction on the price. If you're buying a new construction home, many builders are starting to offer many incentives to either buy down your interest rates, give you tons of closing cost money or price reductions on the homes. And always remember that even though interest rates are high, you can always refinance that rate whenever they go lower in the future. And specifically here in Houston, with such a diverse economy, if you're a homeowner, you're probably going to live in your house for maybe seven, 10 years, maybe more. You're probably most likely I'm almost hundred percent sure you're going to make money in your price on that house and your home is going to appreciate in value. And remember when interest rates go back down, what's going to happen. You're going to have a lot more buyers come into the market because there's a lot of buyers who are holding off right now, waiting for interest rates to go down. You could be entering into a market where there's a lot more competition and we could be seeing something similar to what we saw early in 2021 or late in 2020, but just not at the same level. So as a home buyer, and a home seller, because if you're a home seller and you're trying to buy a new house, you really have to balance the thought of, you know, should I buy right now, try to get a deal, or should I buy later and wait for interest rates to go down? But what if I buy later and now there's a bunch of competition, now I'm getting into bidding wars for homes. Now, enough of the factual stuff, let's get to some fun things. One thing I love to do here in this real estate market update is give you guys some cool spots to either go try out for food, go check out, or look out for in Houston. And today I wanted to highlight about this new restaurant that's coming to the Heights area called June by Kin, and it is brought to you by Top Chef finalist, Chef Evelyn Garcia and Chef Henry Liu. And now if you haven't seen Top Chef Houston, go check it out so you can get to know who Chef Evelyn Garcia is. And that might just bring you some excitement into a restaurant. This is a restaurant that I'm actually very excited for. It's just combining the Southeast Asian flavors with her Mexican and El Salvadorian heritage. So it's bound to be a one of a kind restaurant brought to you by top, top Houston chefs. Now it's October. You're looking for something fun to do. I got you. In Houston, in October, we have the Texas Renaissance Festival. Now, a lot of people may say, what's the big deal? It's just a Texas Renaissance Festival. It's just a Renaissance Festival. Well, it's the 48th one. So <laughs> it's pretty big deal. The Texas Renaissance Festival has been going on for 48 years here in Houston, and this October will be a 48th anniversary. The Texas Renaissance Festival is probably one of the most sought after events by Houstonians, and one of the things that people really like to go do. Now the Texas Renaissance Festival starts October 8th, and it will run through November 27th. And the typical hours to attend the Renaissance Festival are anywhere from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. They do host theme weekends, for example, a Halloween party, 
Oktoberfest, even a pirate weekend. You just have to go on their website and see what they're hosting on each specific weekend. I put the link down below in the description so you can go on there and check it out yourself. Let me leave you with one extra fact that is still not enticed to go to the Texas Renaissance Festival. It is the nation's largest Renaissance Festival. Over half a million guests go every year and it is set on over 70 acres of land. Besides that, that is all I have for you today. If you have any questions, please put them down below. I would love to get them answered for you. You can also shoot them to my email. It's tagged right here on the right hand side, or you can DM me on Instagram and socials. You can find my link right here. If there are any topics you'd like me to cover or any cool places that I need to go check out that you know of that I don't know of, please put them down below in the description and let me know about them. Who knows, I may feature the place on the next month's update of places that you need to go if you're in Houston. With that said, I will see you guys next time.